Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Yes, they did end up getting me a clock spring, okay? Here's the new clock spring. Y'all saw all the fault codes. Um, so I'm about to open that up and install this. So let me go over a few things with you just in case y'all try this yourself. Is this a do-it-yourself job? I always got to... I'm going to start putting that disclaimer out here before... Um, before I start uh, doing repairs, because I uh, got in trouble a couple of times with a couple of guys trying to do something that they had a problem getting out of. So this is, uh, in my opinion, and also keep in mind, these are my opinions, all right? This can be a do-it-yourself job if you have the proper tools. As you know, the steering wheel has to come off. In fact, this this is a hurdle in itself getting off. The, the horn pad airbag cover. Now, here's my tool that I use, okay? Basically, the tool goes in and picks up on these tabs y'all see this little lever right here all you do is take take a tool as such i built this one now there's a proper tool for it but i end up building this and you stick it through this hole right here okay y'all see that let me get you all that good right here this is my tool right here so all you do is get up under there and pick up on it like that that will release the tabs that will release these tabs off of uh off from behind this lever here and you just pick them you just do it's three of them one two and three all right in fact guys i did a video on that uh i already had this one off i wasn't thinking to record it but uh i did a video on that already uh this gen 2 now generation 2 i got criticized because one guy had a 04 he couldn't get off this way guys there's a difference between first of all the pt cruiser came out in 2001 okay it hung around to 2010, you know, in some markets. But at 2006, the whole body and electronics changed, okay? Including the steering column and the steering wheel. All the whole dash changed, okay? It has a new electronics, tip and everything, okay? So from 06 and up, which is Generation 2, this is the way to remove the airbag module. Like I say, follow that link in the video that I did. I get in depth on how to get to it. All right. Also, I did a video on uh, if your horn is sticking. A lot of times when you press your horn on Gen 2, the horn will stay activated. Sometimes you can pick up on it to remove the contacts off of each other and it will stop. But I showed you a hack or a trick on how to eliminate that, okay, where you spray inside on the tabs. In fact, the video right here, go watch that, guys. All right. It's a real informative video on how to stop your horn from stay blowing. So now let's talk cruise control. I mean, let's talk uh, clock spring. Uh, as I explained earlier in part one of the video, uh, if you don't have a horn and you have clock spring codes, uh, sequip circuit open. That's usually uh, the open circuit. Okay, now there's a simulator tool we have. I can't find it because our shop is being clean. I wanted to show y'all that. Uh, Guys, these are horn contacts right here, here. You don't have to replace these if your horn is... Well, you you got to do your diagnosis first, okay, to determine that. But we're going to stay focused on the clock spring. And in order to remove the clock spring, the steering wheel has to come off, all right? So I'm going to go grab some tools to get this 13-millimeter bolt off and uh, see if I can remove the steering wheel without a steering wheel puller. Some cases, you may need a steering wheel puller, all right? So we're going to go through that procedure together, guys. So let me grab some tools right quick. Let me go to the ad break. When I get back, we're going to start yanking this steering wheel off. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. Stay with it. Uh, let's go ahead and get this uh, module horn pad out of the way. Just simply press in the tabs to remove the electrical connector. And we're going to lay this horn pad to the side. All right, from there, guys, like I say, this 13 millimeter bolt has to be removed because the goal is to simply remove, let's go ahead and remove this connector. The goal is to simply remove the steering wheel, all right? And like I said earlier, you may, you may or may not need a steering wheel puller. Well, it's all about finesse, guys. So just, uh, yeah, it's, it's fairly loose. All right, so guys, it's, just, it's about finagle. I really, I'm gonna need both of my hands, but sometimes I can just use, there it is. Yeah, so be careful with the connectors going through the 
See, there you is. There you have it. So now what we're going after, guys, is this clock spring. As you can see, it's held on right here. T20. Uh, should be another one somewhere. Okay, we got to get the switches off of her. So I'm going to go need my stubby, my stubby Phillip head to remove both of these uh, headlight switch and wiper switch. We got to get both of those off because it's another T screw down in here. All right, so let's keep going, man. Let's get with it. Right, so let's keep right on going. We got to get these screws out of here now. That's some stubby little filler head screw like right there. Gotta get that screw out in order to remove the switch. And the reason you gotta remove the switch is to gain access to the clock spring, which is what we were chasing anyway. All right, guys, so I got the two switches screws unplugged. I'm gonna leave these sitting right here. All right, because all I want is screws to get to the clock spring. You got one, uh, I already got that one out. And you got one right here. I got that one loose, so now let's take this one out. And you got a couple of connectors on the bottom you need to just merely unplug. Let's go ahead and remove this screw to make removal fairly easy. So once you get all the screws out, guys, the clock spring just comes off like this. Remove the two connectors and you're home free. There you have it. All right, there's a the clock spring, guys. Uh, it's a quib circuit open, okay? That signal goes through the clock spring. Also, the horn didn't work, so chances are you have a short in here somewhere. It may be right there, guys. Y'all see this, uh, that connector? Looks like it's been uh, physically damaged. Okay, at any rate, uh, where's my new clock spring? Ta -da! All right, guys, let's take a look. And this is an OEM. I have no idea if they even sell uh, aftermarket clock spring. It's just the only ones I've put on all the years I've been doing. All right. Uh, yes, same thing. So the installation procedure is merely a reversal of the removal procedure. Now, let me uh, give you a heads up, guys. Make sure your steering wheel is straight before you start removing it. I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning because this clock spring is centered from the factory, okay? They even put a little tab in here so you would know uh, when they build these, they center them, put the tab in, put it in the box, and seal the box, okay? So this is not, if this was used clock spring, you might have a hard time. You, you can do it. I've, I've had to do it a couple of times where I turn it all the way one way until it peg out and go all the way the other way until it peg out. Well, the goal behind it is to find the center position because you don't want to be too much one way or the other, okay? Because you can easily snap the clock spring when you, uh, when you install it or when you turn, all right? So let's get this new clock spring installed, guys, and let's finish this job up. All right, guys, a couple points I want to leave with you. I got the steering wheel sitting back on here. I make sure be extra careful on centering or getting the center part of the switch in the center position. Okay, I normally pull this tab because you're already centered. You got the wheel straight and you have the steering wheel centered. That is when I normally pull the, uh, the center pin out. Okay, and of course, be sure and stick your connector back in here. From there, guys, uh, one last important note. Uh, Make sure you torque this bolt back to specs. 
I will put the specs in the description, okay? And from there, simply plug in your old or the same horn pad, airbag module, plug that in. It just merely pops back into place, all three tabs, spring-loaded, so it should go click straight back on there. And uh, from there, verify that your code is gone. Uh, you will know the code is gone because the airbag light will essentially go out, okay? Hopefully, that was your problem. If you did your diagnosis right, uh, you would be assured that that's your problem, okay? Uh, let's try to get out of the habit of guessing because these parts can be expensive, uh, and guesses can be extremely expensive, guys. All right, but before I go, man, let me go ahead and uh, I got the boat on here. Let me go ahead and uh, I got these connected, airbag module connected. I got the center boat connected. Okay, so now from the looks of it, the whole airbag system is complete right about now. I just ain't haven't popped the horn pad in. So what I want to do to verify that my problem is fixed before I push this in, because you may have to go back in it. Uh, let's start the car and see. Remember, guys, airbag codes are funny. If they're active, the airbag light is going to stay on. If the problem goes away, if the OCM see the problem goes away, it will turn the airbag light off. Let's start it. All right, it's running. As you can see, the airbag light is on. Please go off. There you go. Okay, wait three more seconds because I've seen them go off and then come back on like the computer sees a problem. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that problem is repaired. Okay, now, like I say, uh, that code was still in the memory of the module, but it doesn't matter with airbags, okay? Airbags are a different breed. That light will come on when the OCM, ORC, sees a problem. It will turn it on. Uh, airbags are under different are under different rules than uh, emissions, per se, okay? Uh, when a safety issue with the airbag arises, the computer turns the light on, all right, because we really want people to know that their airbag has been disabled as soon and as quickly as possible. But because the car is running and the airbag light is off, obviously the airbag module sees no problem. All right, so guys, we have fixed this car. Now, it's up to you if you want to go in and erase the memory. But like I say, because the problem is not evident uh, now at this particular time, it's not active, uh, you can, you're pretty much done. So let's pop this. I might as well show y'all how I get this horn pad back in. Just, it can't help but to line up because of, you know, the steering wheel, all right? Merely push in. There you go. And y'all hear that? She has a horn back. So we have killed two birds in one stone. The horn works and the airbag light is off. Yes, I am satisfied that uh, this was a successful repair. All right, guys, let me wrap this up. You don't need to see. I mean, this is a piece of cake putting the cover on. We want to install everything we took off. I don't need to do that on camera. So let me end this. Thanks for watching. Comment and subscribe. And I'll see y'all on the next video.